it's on. So welcome to the engine shed at Peters Railway. It's Chris Vine here. We're going to make a small video today about how you get up steam on a steam engine. First thing to do is to get the engine out of its shed. So here we have one locomotive, it's called Bongo in real life, in the books it's called Fiery Fox. So um, let's get up steam. So the first thing we need to do is to attach the little blower to um, help get the fire going. That's a pipe that can go to that. It's a little electric fan. Once the engine's going it makes its own, it makes its own uh, draft. But to start with you need a little bit of assistance from an electric fan. Uh, we've got some coal here, it comes in a suitable size, it's called beans, anthracite beans. Um, and the only thing is, it's quite difficult to light uh, coal directly. So we're going to use some uh, charcoal I've soaked in paraffin earlier. And that lights very easy, it's almost like, like fire lighters. But before we do that, we need to make certain there's enough water in the boiler. So I don't know if you can see in here, there's the two water gauges. And you can just see the water level down there, it's about a quarter full. If I just give it a little bit of a move. You can see the water's moving around nicely. That's not a bubble. It's not a sort of, not a sort of false reading. So we've got about a quarter of a gauge of, of water. That is fine. So what we have to do is to light the fire. Here is the fire hole door. And I've cleaned it all out before. So what we can do is we can put, just to start with, a few little bits of, actually I've got some, I've got some paper that I use for something that's soaked in, soaked out the paraffin water. So that can go in there. And what I can do is to light the fire. Here we are. So this is the vital bit. Uh, one lighter, like that this easily. Ooh, get the little fan going. So that should now. That's right. That's drawing the drawing the fire through the boiler now. Get rid of that. So now we need a little bit of charcoal to go in there. Charcoal soaked in paraffin. Very very combustible. Put a bit of that in. We put a few shovelfuls of this in. We'll put a little bit of coal in with it and get it going. Right, we have got fire. We have got water in the boiler, so I'm going to shut the fire hole door and I'm going to let a little tiny bit of air go in over the top of the fire like that. We've got a damper, that opens and shuts a door underneath the fire box to let air, more air in or less, so we've got that fully open at the moment. So I think we'll put a little bit more um, charcoal and coal in the fire just to keep it getting hotter and hotter. So a bit more charcoal, open the fire hole door. It's looking quite good in there, but it's not really not really getting hot yet. Right, that's okay. Shut that. We'll leave a little bit of top air going in as well. That's all right. Um, so we've got plenty of coal for the day. I'll just check we've got plenty of water in the tender as well. Yeah, the, water, the tender's full of water there. I don't know if you can see that. Tender's full of water. And I just need to make certain... Uh, so I need to open these two little valves here. That's that one open. And that's that one already open. So that lets water go through from the tender water tank through to the injector to fill the boiler later on. Um, so we have the fire lit. Uh, one bit, the boiler will be cold still almost, but the safety valves here, they're connected right through into the boiler part. So they're getting quite nice and warm to touch now. So it's warming up slowly. So we've got the fire lit. Uh, we've got water in the boiler and the charcoal is crackling away. And the next vital thing to do is to make the cup of tea. Uh, kettle has boiled and uh, we have the very appropriate uh, uh, the teapot for a small railway, uh, Le Shuttle, since uh, that's just down the road from where we live. Uh, I found that in a junk shop. So uh, what we need is to put some tea bags in there. Damn the expense, two tea bags. Right, give that a few minutes. Right, tea is brewing. And we have two very suitable uh, mugs here. Uh, Peter's Railway, 
happy birthday from to Harry from Peter's Railway. And uh, here we have uh, rather younger Peter and Harry driving the engine. Cheers, Peter. Cheers. The next thing to do is to oil the engine. So I need to put my specs on so I can see all the little oil holes. And um, here we go. So this takes a moment to do. Let's get that out of the way. So uh, the first one to do is the bogey wheels, little oil wells just in there. Nothing's happening yet. Something's gone in there. And the next one, something's gone in there. Right, then what I do next is all the main connecting rods and coupling rod bushes. Went over the top of it, but never mind. A little bit in the coupling rod there. A little bit in that big end bearing. A little drop can go in the eccentric rod bearing. That's a little ball bearing in there. Half a drop in there. And one up there. That's done one side of the coupling rods. Then we've got to do the valve gear. So, here's the combination lever. There's a little bush at the top there. There's a hidden one down in the back there. A little pin there. A little pin there. And this is an important one. This is the little end bearing here, the little end of the connecting rod. Make sure that's got plenty of oil in there. Right, that's got that done nicely. And then some more valve gear parts here. So here's the expansion link for reversing and notching up. So we've got a little bit of oil in there that goes through two tiny little holes and runs down on the side. And then we've got a little one to do there. That's that die block there. Little one there. There's a little teeny one up under there. Right, and then that's done all of that side of the engine here. No, it hasn't, sorry. There's these little oil boxes here. So these have got six little pipes out of each. So that one there goes down and feeds the crossheads for the uh, valve gear, the main crosshead, the guide bars for the main crosshead, and then there's a pipe that goes down to put a little drop of oil onto the um, valve rod. And there's another one goes right down there, put a drop of oil every now and again onto the piston rod. And then, so that's done all of that now. Oh, and this one here, hang on. Put some oil in there. So that one feeds down to, there's two pipes with little bearings either side of, of, the, um, of the expansion link. And then other pipes go down to feed the axle boxes where they slide up and down in, the, uh, in their slides so they can go over bumps and suspension. Right, so now we'll do the tender axle boxes. So these just like on the big ones, they have little felts underneath there that take the oil up into the bearings. Two. They don't take much, they never seem to use any oil at all. Right, okay. Now there's one bit we've not done, which is two bits up here, in fact, we've not done. So here are the two mechanical oil pumps. This one's got six little uh, cylinders or pistons. And as the, um, as the, engine, as the wheels go around, uh, this uh, expansion leak rocks backwards and forwards. There's a little tiny crank under there, which moves those little levers there backwards and forwards, which waggles that little lever. And there's a, there's a ratchet up in here. So every time it waggles, it moves it forwards just a little tiny bit. So perhaps, I don't know, 20 or 30 revolutions of the wheels to, to turn this thing around a whole loop. So then that's pushing down and pushing the oil into the main axle boxes of the engine, the main bearings on the main driving wheels. So the six outputs, three on that side, three on that one, and it's fairly full of oil. So we put a bit of oil in there. That's right, that's done that. Uh, and then the other mechanical loop crater here is this one here. This has only got two little pistons in it, two little plungers. So this is for pumping steam oil into the cylinders. So uh, again, it's driven by the ratchet. So it goes a little tiny bit each time and it's lifting up. And then when it gets over the top, it pushes them down and that's now pushing oil into the cylinders. So the oil is delivered through these tiny little pipes, one into there and one into the other side for the other cylinder. So I need to put some oil into there. Uh, 
tip some oil. This is special steam oil. This this is very uh, gloopy. It's like treacle. Um, ordinary oil, the, the temperature of the steam would just turn into sort of watery stuff and blow straight out of the cylinders. So that's got plenty in there now. And so we've now oiled one side of the engine completely. What I now have to do is to oil the other side of the engine. But I think what we'll do before I go and do that, we'll put a little bit more charcoal and coal in the fire. It's getting there. There's a bit, of, little bit of glowing coal in the bottom of it now. Put a bit more charcoal in because that keeps things going. Right. So the next job is to oil up the other side of the engine, which is not so easy because there's a pipe in the way. But I will go around and do that if I can get there. That is, I don't know how easy this is really. So now I'm going to oil this side of the engine. This side of the engine is quite a lot more difficult to get to because of the pipe that's there and the wall. But I will just do this. Doesn't take very long really. So I've now oiled both sides of the engine outside. There's some little bits in the cab that need oiling. So I don't know if you can see in here, there's a little tiny oil box just there. That takes oil to the um, slides for the uh, rear driving axle box where they slide up and down as you go over bumps in the track. And then there's one on this side here. We'll drop in there. And then there's, a, there's the, the reverser screw that's in there, and I always put a little tiny drop of oil on that to stop that wearing out. Because that reverser screw is a two-start thread and was jolly difficult to machine when I made it, so I don't ever need to make another one. So that's everything oiled up now. Um, time to put some more coal in the fire, keep that going. I don't think we need any more charcoal now. Yeah, look, it's definitely getting proper hot in there now. So we'll put a little bit more coal in. One, two. So we might have got just a tiny bit of steam pressure in the boiler now. And my way of testing that is I just turn the injector steam on and here's the injector overflow. So we'll find out. Ah, oh, we have a drop of steam. There we are. So now what we can actually do, now that we've got steam in the boiler, um, you may have seen some white stuff came out with that. I put a little bit of WD-40 up the injectors when I finish running and that gets rid of the water that sits in there and maybe corrodes the little cones, the little brass cones. So uh, we've got a drop of steam now. So what I can do now is to take this that fan away. It's a bit hot, obviously. Take that away. Hitch that up there. Turn it off. It's got rid of that noise. And now, now that we've finished with that and we've got a little bit of steam pressure, we can turn on the engine's own blower. You can hear it pulling the fire actually if you listen. So we've now got the engine's own uh, blower running. It's four little jets of steam at the bottom of the smoke box and they blow little jets of steam up and they sort of grab, or entrain would be a good word, they entrain all the gases in the smoke box and, and throw them up the chimney. And that uh, makes a slight reduction in pressure in the smoke box, which the effect of that is to draw air in through the bottom of the fire, through the tubes to make the steam and to keep the fire going. So uh, what we've got now is quite a good blast going up there. It's a bit quieter than, than the fan was. The only problem is that the uh, shed will now fill up with uh, smoke. So if I start uh, tears running down my face, it's not because I'm unhappy, it's because I can't really see what I'm doing. So we've now got the blower on. A uh, little bit of pressure on the pressure gauge here. Look, now we can see that. You can see that the fire is looking quite nice and jolly. So here's the blower valve, and you can see if I turn the blower right down, you can see it, look, the fire's gone, oh, the flames come, whoa, that's called a blowback. So with the blower off, there's no, dra no draft through the fire. Turn the blower on, and you can see how it's drawing the fire through. So we leave that on like that for a moment. In fact, I think what I'll do is I'll put a few more shovelfuls of coal in. So we've got the fire lit, it's getting hot, we've got a little bit of steam pressure now, so we need to check that the injectors are working, so it's a good moment to talk about the injectors. So if we look in the cab here, we have got these two valves that are open, so they bring, they connect the water tank in the tender to the engine, and then if you look in here, we've got two other controls for the injector. Here's Here's the water valve that I use when, you, when you're driving the engine. Uh, so that's the water valve, it's a fine, fine control on that one. And the other control here is for this injector is the steam valve. So to put water into the boiler, what we have to do first of all is turn on the water supply. And that is now running out over the overflow of the injector. And then what I have to do is turn on the steam valve which I've got my fingers on there. Right, so I turn the steam valve on, and that if I turn it on slowly, that's now starting to force the water out of the overflow. 
and I turn it on more and more and more and then suddenly it will give it enough force to, I might need to just trim the water level, water rate back a fraction. There we are. So that is now feeding water into the boiler. It makes funny little sucking noises. It probably shouldn't suck in, but it does. So if we look in here now, I don't know if you can see the water level in the boiler. It's just at the bottom of the glass there, isn't it? So if we leave that on for a little bit, I put the blower up a bit because we're putting water in the boiler. We need a bit more heat from the fire. So the water level just about halfway up. And if you watch it for a moment or two, you'll see it's starting to go up now. So we're putting water from the tender tank into the boiler. The injectors are magic. They're not, of course. They don't defy any of the laws of physics. However, they do appear to be magic. No moving parts, and they use boiler pressure steam to force water into the boiler at that same pressure. Uh, but that's, that may be for another video, how injectors work. So I think we've got enough water in the boiler now. So what we do now is to turn, first of all, turn off the steam, and then we turn off the water. So that has now put enough water into the boiler, and now it's time for some more coal. Right, that's coming up nicely. We we'll turn the blower down a little bit. We've got plenty of water. Look, if we go look, if we look at the water gauges, there's several valves on them. Uh, so this one here is just a blowdown valve. So if I do that, it just blows the, the the water and steam out, so you can clear it in case there's a bubble or something making it not read truly. And the other two valves we've got in here, these ones at the at the top and bottom of the water gauge. So they, if the glass was to break, the little glass tube in there was to break, you can shut these off. They're a bit hot. You can shut those off. So now, if the tube was broken, it's it's isolated from the boiler. So if I do that, that's it. It's dead. The other thing you can do with that open, I can now, I can now open just this one, and you can hear that that passage from the boiler is clear. And if I open this one, you can hear the top passage with the steam in it is clear, and that's a way of checking both are clear because. Uh, this happened in the old days. If one of the passages from the boiler to the top or bottom of the water gauge got blocked with scale or muck, then the, the water gauge would give a wrong reading. And if you get the water level too low in the water gauge, then the top of the firebox overheats, and then you have a boiler explosion. So it was actually very important that the, the driver or the fireman tested, tested those uh, test cocks every day. We have another gauge on the other side, so if that gauge was to break, uh, we've got the other gauge there. So we're doing well. Steam pressure is coming up. We keep the blower on a little bit. That's OK. And on this side, we've got exactly the same. We've got the other, the right-hand injector. You can't really see, but under, under, the, under the fireman's seat, there's, a, uh, there's another water valve. In fact, uh, I made two seats. There's a driver's seat as well. But when I'm sitting on the tender driving the engine, the, the seat gets in the way of the reverser and the brake valves. The brake valve's up here, so um, I take the driver's seat out. The steam pressure is coming up now. Uh, what's the what's the water? There's not a lot of water. I think we put a bit more water in. We'll use the we'll use the injector on this side this time. So that's opening the water. You can't really see that valve. Open the steam valve, and that is now putting water in again. Yes, the water level is about two thirds of the way up up the water gauge glass. As an engineer would say, we've got two thirds of a glass, and uh, yes, the water level is going up slowly. On the full-size engines, um, when they started out from maybe heading from King's Cross to Edinburgh, they would open the steam, they would set the injector running, set the, open the water and open the steam for the injector, and they would really just feed water into the boiler the entire time they were running. And the engineers were pretty clever, they got the injector size just about exactly right to feed the same amount of water that the engine was using as steam. The farmer could trim it a little bit with the water, with, with the water valve, um, but the injectors were pretty much sized correctly, using one to feed continuously, and then they had another injector as a spare, or if they needed a bit more, a bit more water feeding in. So I think the water level's gone up a bit now. Can you see it up there, nearly at the top of the gauge? That's okay. So we will now turn off the steam to the injector, and then shut the water level off again, shut the water off at that little valve. So really, I think we'd better put a drop more coal in, so let me just do that. Right, shut that. But now we've got the fire go, we'll let that flap shut. We'll just let that go. On the full size engines, the LNER full size engines, they actually fired through that flap. So what they would do 
uh, because you don't really want a lot of cold air going into the top of the firebox because all it does is go through and cool the fire they would fire through that flap they would the farmer would shovel through like that and maybe his coal was a bit smaller than mine um, and he could just fire fire through the flap and the flap would shut each time he'd done it or he could set it there's a little ratchet there would let it stay open um, but really they would never open the fire hole door like that to fire it was firing through that little flap on the on the london northeastern engines so we have fire we have water in the boiler we have steam pressure pretty much a full pressure not quite um we'll put the blower on a bit more pull the steam pressure up a bit more um so really we're probably ready to uh drive the engine outside what we need is a seat for the driver so we have a seat which goes on the back of the tender very gently so as not to spoil the paint and the other thing we need is a footrest for the driver's feet. So there's a little tiny pair of holes under the tender that goes through there. Of course, a vital part of the engine is the whistle. There's, there's a, a, le a, a little uh, handle you pull down there. And uh, some people say, why are the two? And the answer is because both the fireman on this side or the driver could reach up and, and blow the whistle to act as a warning. And uh, so both the farmer and the driver would act as lookout. So we have got steam, we've got the drains open, I'm now going to put it in reverse gear and toot the whistle before we move. So I hope you've enjoyed a little video about uh, getting up steam at Peters Railway. Um, we'll make another one soon about uh, how you drive the engine, all the controls you use to drive it efficiently and safely and to use as little coal as possible. Um, and the other video we've got to make very soon is about the turning loop we built at this end. The railway uh, for many years had an uh, up and down line, then two years ago we built a turning loop at the top end. And that means when you come back down to this end you have to then run backwards for a whole loop round again. But very soon we will have a turning loop that uh, lets us run continuously. So anyway, for today, thank you very much for watching and um, on the reverse run, back up the line. Bye-bye.